Hi folks, Thomas Hinson here with ThomasHinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions, Book Club. <laughs> Still probably need to work on the name, but today we're going to be reviewing Principles by Ray Diallo. So Principles by Ray Diallo, uh, it was a really good book. I did it uh, through audiobook so or Audible, so I'm a big Audible fan. If you've ever, you know, if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I, I try to read a good bit of books and I try to take, you know, business, technology, and even some fun books just along the way. And, and, I, and I track those books every year. So, you know, this year I've got a goal of maybe hitting 30. I didn't hit my goal last year. So let's hope that this year I hit it. So principles, number two book that I finished this year, Ray Diallo. So Ray Diallo is co-founder and former CEO of Bridgewater and Associates, which is a hedge fund. So you're probably like, hey, what does this have to do with technology? Let me tell you, without any spoilers, Ray and Hedge Fund and, you know, the financial industry, they are really big into technology and he has a lot of opinions about automating, using AI and using uh, machine learning to be able to automate decision making. And he talks about it from a business perspective, but also from a life perspective, too. So um, one thing, if you're looking at this book, and you're like, you know what, I'm really not interested in finance. Trust me, then it's OK for you. Right? This book is mostly about principles to make yourself a principled person for life, but also for work, too. So in it goes across any different sector, right? Like we could be talking about agile development, uh, software engineering, data engineering, which we talk about a ton on this channel. So he just really talks about how to build a culture and how to build a culture of improvement, right? And so that's one of the big keys is how to improve. So um, this book came, actually spun out of some letters that he wrote to and published to the, to the public and even internally at Bridgewater uh, throughout the years. Um, their claim to fame, one, one of the best uh, hedge funds out there for, for a long time standing. And also, they uh, predicted the economic global collapse in 2007. So um, actually, actually the, I think he put out like a hundred, some over a hundred page letter that was called Principles. And he's talking about the principles of why he sees the collapse coming. So a lot of fame there, spun this book out too. So let me go through the four big keys that I pulled away from reading Principles. So the first one, number, so number one, write things down. So, or, you know, electronically, you know, you can, you can kind of type them down. I'm still huge into writing things down. So, you know, I try to journal throughout the time, you know, and talk about, you know, what went well, what went wrong. And then I even write out my goals too. So it was good to see, you know, Ray emphasize on how much he's written over the years. And we're talking about boxes and boxes. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, that's one key thing that I've seen across any of these kind of books that talk about, you know, how to improve yourself or how to be in a constant state of, you know, trying to get the best out of yourself. So he talks about writing down your principles and he kind of goes through um, a framework around how to how to build those out. But the important thing was write them down so that you can constantly go back and kind of in, improve those iteratively. Like I said, if you're going more the digital route, it's probably a better thing for me to start getting into and do like I, I do use Evernote, but man, it's something about still writing in a journal and being able to go back and, and look from that perspective. But I don't have any search features. So um, number one big thing was uh, write down what you're, you know, write down your principles, your goals, what you're doing and constantly go back and look at those. Number two, constant improvement. So this is this is something we've talked about a good bit on this channel, just, you know, from the perspective of continuing to learn, continuing to get better. And it's something that they talked about, you know, from a Bridgewater perspective and even just from a personal being a better human being perspective in the book principles. And so, you know, if you think about it, it was, like I said, eerily close to, you know, I'm reading a book from somebody who started out, you know, in financial and, you know, runs a hedge, you know, ran a hedge fund. And he's talking about agile development pr pretty much. You know, he's talking about iterate. So like, you know, put in an improvement, try to, you know, track that improvement. You know, when when you see something that you can fix, you know, in whatever you're trying to improve in yourself or, you know, whatever plan you're putting out, make that change and then iterate. Right. And just keep going on and on and on. So, I mean, really, like I said, really, really, you know, core principle. I don't know which one came first. Right. Like, you know, the constant improvement, writing things down, um, you know, from, you know, a principle or business or, you know, life aspect or, you know, the way that we do it from an agile development. So really cool. So constant improvement, something we always talk about here. So that was number two. Number three. This is something I've really worked on the last year to year, two years. Open criticism and communication, right? So being able to take criticism and being able to give it um, in a professional way, in a courteous way, right? Now, whether you're talking about, hey, you know, I've got some, you know, I've got some goals that I'm trying to tackle this year or the next five years for my, you know, my personal self, or whether you're talking about, hey, you know, we're working on a project at work and I need some advice on this. 
So being able to go to your core friends or, you know, your core uh, just, you know, thought leaders, be able to take criticism, be able to ask for it and be able to implement the changes. So it goes back to, you know, the other two core uh, points that we were talking about with being, you know, writing things down, iterating, iterating through that change. So um, being open to criticism and being able to give it and having and creating a culture and an environment where you can take that. Right. Like, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to take criticism and, you know, but if you think about it from the aspect of, hey, you know, this person is trying to help you become a better person. And if you have that relationship, then it's going to help you be better. It's going to help, you know, the projects you're working on. So I thought that was a really cool uh, key component. And it was really cool to hear it coming from somebody who had been a CEO and asked and wanted uh, criticism versus being surrounded by just people that were going to rubber stamp his, his policy. And number four, loving the process. And so that was one of the core point, uh, key point, points when we were talking about just from a Bridgewater perspective of how he built the culture that he did. And he was saying, basically, you know, you want to hire and you want to work with the people that are going to love the process you're doing, right? So, you you've, you know, it's not for everybody, right? And we, and we know that, you know, everything, you know, whether we talk about data engineering, data science, there's all different kinds of things that people are interested in and not interested in. And so finding that core group of people who are going to love that process and love, hey, the constant improvement, the constant, you know, open communication and criticism. And if you find that, you're going to be successful in anything that you do. So I thought it was really, uh, thought it was a really good point. So last but not least, we talked about the four points that I pulled out of it. My recommendation, you can probably already tell how my recommendation is going to go, but I highly recommend this book for anybody. You know, these are key points that you can bring in throughout your personal goal development or your, you know, if you're going into management or if you're just an individual contributor and you just want to create a better culture and a better team environment on the teams that you're working on, definitely pick this book up. I think it's going to be something that's going to last uh, for quite a long time. I know he's working on and maybe it's already implemented out there, but he's working on putting an app together to kind of pull some of these core components around how to build your own principles, how to build principles for your company and how to implement those and keep those going. So I thought it was, I mean, I think he spent a lot of time, you can tell, a lot of time in the research and everything just to go through it. So definitely put it on your list, check it out, and uh, let me know what you think too. So if you have an idea for a book I should read on here, put them in the comment section below or reach out to me. Um, also, if you've read this book, tell me what you thought about it. Did you like it? Am I off base? Is it something worth worthwhile? Do you think it's horrible that data engineers shouldn't read it? Um, I think they do. So let me know. 